Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero, and welcome to Doki Doki Anomaly, the full version, which is a horror game. Redated bunch of anime SCPs. Note that I have played an earlier version of this game, but like I said earlier, this is the full version. It contains multiple SCPs, and this acts as a direct sequel to the previous game. The first recorded death associated with SCP-8008 occurred on December 18th, 1997. The victim, Jean-Paul Review, 38, Caucasian male, was found pinned under his Dodge truck. Police in the scene reported him being smushed to the neck like an empty tube of toothpaste. Exact wording. He was also smiling ear to ear and wearing a pair of novelty spiraled lens glasses. The SCP Foundation became involved later, and the local detective assigned to the case was also found dead. Dissimmered by his own lawnmower, smiling broadly and wearing the same glasses. Apparently this anomalous pair of novelty glasses, deemed SCP-8008, allows the wearer to fall in love with literally anything. SCP-8008 Log, October 6, 1999 The entire first cohort of researchers assigned to the anomaly has been redacted. The first three researchers were killed by an H2 pencil, a diamond necklace, and a pool noodle. The last was found redacted and redacted redacted. All the data after that has been expunged. What am I supposed to do with this? I showed SCP-8008 case files to discuss and tucked the folder under my arm. Who'd I piss off to get assigned to Anomaly with a 100% casualty rate? It must be because of the SCP-458 incident last month. Stupid infinite pizza box. Damn it. The heavy doors to SCP-173, the sculpture's enclosure, are already open when I arrive. My assistant, Dr. Farron Sherman, smiles briefly at me as I enter the room, and then returns to reviewing his notes. He flips his pen in an elaborate loop between his fingers. His nervous fidget. A dozen D-class inmates inside are all staring intently at vaguely peanut-shaped sculptures standing motionless in the corner of the room. After all, it only takes an instant when nobody has an indirect line of sight, even a blink at the wrong time. And it will snap all our necks in an instant. Ah, here comes Dr. Fields, now from his experiment of SCP-682. Morning. He seems distracted. Morning, sir. Everything alright? He blinks, seeming to refocus. Yes, yes, everything's fine. I look at the strange pair of glasses Dr. Fields is handing me. This is it? I take SCP-8008 novelty glasses from him, noting how light they are. Just a dark plastic frame and a spiral pair of lenses. Dr. Fields wipes his hands off on his lamp coat, as if to get rid of anything the glasses may have left behind. They look funny, but let me tell you. He swells nervously. They're no joke. I'm pretty sure this is a joke. Dr. Fields nods and takes his leave. Alright. I sell into the flimsy aluminum chair at the table provided and activate the microphone. No turning back now. I take a deep breath and put on SCP-8008, the novelty glasses. Nice. Uh, hello? Nice. I clear my throat, hoping my nerves won't be too noticeable in the video recording. Hello, SCP-173. Whether she's thinking deeply or completely brain dead, I can't tell. Can you understand me? That was something. I'll be continuing experimentation with you, is that alright? Were you... expecting someone else? If she's looking for my predecessor, she's going to be disappointed. They're not coming back. They died. But maybe we can be friends. But maybe we can be friends. Oh, you like that, huh? You like <laughs> never chance to escape. She seems to like that idea. Beside me, Dr. Sherman has scribbled something in his notes. I'm glad. Her voice sends shivers up my spine. I decompose myself, return to the basics of CQC. Our goal here is to clarify exactly how SCP-8008 produces its hallucinations and to better understand its psionic properties, aka anime. We will compare my subjective experiences to the audio video footage and Dr. Sherman's notes. To begin, I will show you some images. Is that alright, SCP-173? She seems pretty eager. Perhaps this won't be as hard as I expected. Okay. 
I show the image of a monarch butterfly in summer. What do you see? Butterfly. Wow, good job. A butterfly? You know what a butterfly is? She's so difficult to read. Next, I show the image of a human face. And this. My love. What? Where are you, my love? Sir, what's wrong? I hadn't realized it, but I'd stood up. The small hairs on my back of my neck are standing straight up. Everything inside me is screaming to get away from this creature. Nothing, I'm fine. It takes all my self-control to force myself to sit down. I can do this. Bless, I show an image of her actual face. The blank spray-painted eyes stir up from the paper. Last one, okay. What do you see here? Confront of the image of her actual face, she seems distressed. No. Someone died. D-Boys! The twisted body of one of the D-Class personnel is slammed suddenly into the table, looking up at me with wide eyes. His body is spasming at the sudden disconnection from his brainstem. His head has turned 180 degrees. What just happened? I didn't see, I blinked. The man on the table has stopped twitching. His iris is mid-dilated. Around the room, the remaining D-Class have their backs against the walls. One woman is hyperventilating, covering her eyes. I blink too. And me! And me! Not again. Everyone just happened to blink, at the same time. I will remind D-Class personnel that any deviation from eye contact protocol will have severe consequences. Oh, we can see that. Beyond the obvious. Right. I almost jump out of my chair as the timer beeps. We're going to end here for today. Please don't be upset. I'll... We'll be back tomorrow, okay? She seems relieved about that. Is that really something I should be happy about? I'll be waiting. Her voice. I don't think I'll ever get used to it. I remove SCP-8008, take a moment to wipe the sweat from my face. Above the glasses, I can see SCP-173 as it actually is. A monster of concrete and rebar. Looming right in front of me. The corpse on the table seems to be staring at it. Afraid to look away even in death. Nothing. I scrub for the grainy video again. No evidence of the young woman I've been speaking to in the testing chamber. No evidence that SCP-173 was in any way communicating with me. It's just me, wearing those ridiculous glasses, talking to myself. Time for us to go down like our pre predecessor did. Now, I remember this game wasn't really a... It's not like a true game, it's just... Just spam it. Like, there's no, like, repercussions or really much puzzle work. Don't break my legs, please. And if I remember correctly, the endings are heavily tied to this. Get some points there. Nice. Please don't break my legs. I will get all the points, which will most likely just get me killed anyways, because of the nature of what you are. Heh. <laughs> or, if you click on my face, Hey, nice. I wake with a start. What was that dream? So you actually click on the face now. Something about legs. And... Oh, wait. This is new. What the hell? Thank you. For what? She's gone. I reach up to touch my face. Terrified that I might find SCP-8008 there. It's just me. So what did I just see? I dress and head down to the cafeteria to get some water. A clock on the wall reads just past 2 a.m. 
It's so quiet. Where am I? Mom had a SCP 8008's containment locker. I hadn't meant to come here. Is this how it starts? I slowly back away from the locker, the halogen lights in the hallway feeling overly bright, exposing. Then know something odd about SCP 8008's locker. The padlock is askew as if someone has been tampering with it. I realize it's been unlocked and replaced backwards to hide the unclassed mechanism. Looking inside, I confirm my fears. SCP-8008 is missing. I didn't do this. I'm positive I didn't do it. I check out my pockets, my face needing on top of my head just to be sure. What are you doing here? I almost jump out my skin at the sudden voice. The senior. The third researcher from a cohort is leaning against the doorway, arms crossed. She's wearing a lab coat, a pair of green slippers, and a concerned scowl. Well? Is that what it looks like? I didn't even mean to come here. She waves away my concern, standing up straight. I know. What? It doesn't mean that Dr. Singer had been assistant to the previous lead researcher. The one who had been redacted out of all the files. I had a feeling I'd find one of you here tonight. It's just the same as last time. I've got to caught you before. She runs her hands up and down her arms. I'm not so sure you did. I move aside to show her the open containment locker. Dr. Singer's eyes go wide. It wasn't me. Then who? Fields! he have been acting strange today. Hey! Without warning, Dr. Singer has me by the lapel of my coat and has dragged me out into the hallway. Hey, what the? She yanks me into a dead sprint, still not explaining herself. I'm barely able to keep up. Dr. Singer pulls a containment breach alarm as we pass it, and I realize just how much trouble we're in. The alarms are deafening. I've only ever heard them once before, at the site I've been transferred from. Fourteen people had died that night. The hallway rocks violently. Find us pours from the concrete ceiling, catching my throat as we run. I cough hoarsely, my lungs already burning from the unfamiliar exercise. My worst fears are confirmed as we round the final corner. All I can see is a cloud of billing dust and stone debris. Huge shards of rock have gouged the walls in the far end of the corridor, exploding from. The wall that had been SCP-8682's temporary containment chamber. Help! <laughs> I jump as the hand grasps my trouser leg. To my horror, I recognize Dr. Veda, the fourth and final researcher in our cohort. His lips and chin are crimson with blood. His torso has been pulped by metal shrapnel. I barely have time to process this before a shape looms out of the new hole in the wall. It's big. I have as Dr. Fields is standing with his arms raised toward it. I can't see his face, but I know he's wearing SCP-8008. The massive keter class anomaly crawls over the pile of debris. Yellow acid smoke pours off its body. It's about to start seeing her and I. My body freezes, pinned by those hateful yellow eyes. My beloved, my queen! He looks so small next to her. I did as you asked. Now we can be together. Disgusting. It snaps Dr. Fields up in his crocodilian jaw. Faster than I can believe. Well, I guess you're now together in some form. <coughs> Dr. Fields screams as SCP-682 shakes him back and forth like a doll. I can hear his body breaking. SCP-8008 flies off and lands near my feet. A wave of desire to put them on washes over me. Melting through the absolute terror and leaving only calm. Put them on! Oh my... <laughs> She's... Big. Nice. She holds Dr. Fields by the torso in one of her hands. His screams become gurgles and my mind struggles to understand what it's singing. Dr. Fields' body seems to dissolve in ragged chunks, as if something unseen is tearing him apart. Then it occurs to me. She is... Then he's gone. Interesting. Gunfire erupts from behind SCP-682. I hit the floor just as bullets whip through the air around me, sending up sprays of sharp stone where they hit the tiles. I cover my head. Even above the sirens and the gunfire, I can hear SCP-682 shriek as it enters a rage state. The floor rocks under me as another section of the building collapses. Then suddenly... Can we, like, date all of them? And just have him, like, duke it out at the end, like, He's mine to kill! The shower of debris and bullets stop. Even sound seems muted. I decide to risk it. Carefully, I open one dust-covered eye to see. A pair of bare, gray feet standing just inches from my face. 
Wait. After a moment of confusion, it dawns on me. SCP-096 had been moved into the adjoining cell block for testing. I cover my eyes in an instant, fearing I haven't seen its face somehow. Nice. Nice, we're getting all the SCPs. To see SCP-09's face is certain death. You. Its voice rings from the high ceiling chamber. Followed by a howl from SCP-096, as it too enters a rage state upon being glimpsed. I violently begin to crawl away from the sounds of fighting as the two anomalies clash. I hope desperately I'm going in the opposite direction. A huge chunk of concrete strikes me in the back, crushing the air from my lungs in a whoosh. I can't breathe. I can't breathe! My vision goes soft around the edges as the life is slowly crushed out of me. Is this it? Something is pulling on my legs. Something impossibly strong. I feel hands around my ankles. I gasp as the pressure on my chest is released and the light returns to the world. Oh! Okay, it is gonna be... It's like an isekai horror anime. You're okay. I've got you. I won't ever let the others have you. She's gone. Nice. I hear voices. I hear Dr. Sherman shouting. Why is he shouting? Doctor, can you hear me? I try to respond, but it turns into a hacking cough. My throat is full of dust. You are right. He helps me to sit up and waits while I cough a while longer. Miraculously, I seem to be unharmed. Let's get you to the medical ward. He supports me as I stand. Glancing backwards as we turn to leave, I see the slab of concrete that almost killed me. And the trail for the dust from where SCP-173 had dragged me to safety. See, look, it likes us. It, it could have snapped our neck. But no, I see it saved us. So, you know, they, 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 they love us. This is alright. This is a good thing. Why? I'm hooked up to several machines in a private room. My heartbeat sounds quick and irregular on the monitor. Isn't this a bit excessive? Dr. Sherman looks up at me from his chair in the corner. His lips twist into a wry grin. You know. For someone so smart, you're a real idiot. Huh. <laughs> Fair. I lean back in my nest of pillows. It's Dr. Singer, all right. Yeah, she's fine. She had the sense to run when she saw what happened to Dr. Fields. And not awkwardly. He stands and hands me a glass of water from the bedside table. I drain the glass, not realizing how thirsty I'd been. And the breach. Dr. Sherman sighs at that, then shoves his hand in his pockets. Right around the side as they were able to recontain both SCP-682 and SCP-096. But... But SCP-173 is missing. Should I tell him SCP-173 saved my life? Its containment chamber was found open. We define SCP-173. I... I think I might be in danger. That's as much as I'm willing to say. Dr. Sherman's eyes narrow. The task force personnel are already down the tunnel searching for it. They're all gonna die, you know how it goes. They won't find her. It. They won't find it. Right, sorry. Why not? How do I explain it to them? We need to ask someone who was there. Everyone who saw what happened was torn apart. Other th than you, I'm assuming that's what I'm supposed to say? Not everyone. Absolutely not. No, absolutely not. Farron, I don't have a lot of time. It's hard to explain. He crosses his arms for a moment, then seems to deflate. Fine. Suppose someone has to keep watch over you. A chill runs down my spine at that. I can't help but wonder if SCP-173 is watching me even now. There's no time to lose. Let's look at 096. You haven't seen them yet. As per protocol, no one is actually allowed to enter SCP-096 containment chamber. The risk of accidentally glimpsing its face is just too high. But as a count of him wearing the funny glasses, and that's all it would take. SCP-096 cannot be stopped once you've seen its face. It will find you and kill you, no matter what. Is this really such a good idea? Around us, the armored task force personnel watch carefully, wary for any sign of trouble. Dr. Sherman, Dr. Singer, and I stop in front of SCP-096 sealed doorway. We don't have to do this. Would you ever go ask the big lizard what it saw? Dr. Sherman's face drains of color just thinking about it. Guess not, then. Shall we? Dr. 
Dressinger hesitates before initiating the audio link. She didn't say anything at all to me yesterday. So don't be disappointed if this doesn't go like you hope. I nod and she punches in the code. Dr. Sherman hands me SCP-8008. Looking like he'd ever be anywhere else. Centering myself, I put them on. She's... singing. What? It's beautiful. Like a bird. It sounds so sad. Almost lonely. It's okay, it's okay. I like anime. She stopped. Who's there? Uh, hello? No, look away. Look away. She wants us to look away from the console. But I can't even... Don't look, please. She's begging us. Dr. Singer and Sherman both look awkwardly at the floor. Is that better? Yes. You have a beautiful voice. You have a beautiful voice. Please. Don't lie to me. I'm not lying, you really do. Thank you. You're welcome. Dr. Sherman's looking at me oddly. I need to keep this on track. I need to talk to you about yesterday. No. I hate her. Don't make me. She screams so loud the speaker cuts out, but we can still hear it clearly through the wall. The task force team leader steps forward, ready to intervene. Stand down. I try to put as much of 40 as I can into my voice. Protector Field's dead. I am the highest ranking official at this facility. God help us. Through his visor, I watch the man's eyes flicker between my face and my Class 5 authorization badge. Stand down. The task force man exhales, then returns to his post. I watch him a moment longer before returning my attention to SCP-096. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to upset you. Please talk to me. You're going to have to look at me again. No, I swear SCP-682 won't come anywhere near you. I just want to ask about SCP-173. We just need to know where she... I mean, it went. Then you'll leave me alone. No. Yes, and we'll leave you alone. Okay. Just like that, she's going to tell us. I try not to let my excitement show my face. I want something first. Do you want a face? Damn it. It couldn't be that easy. What do you need to return? At my sight, Dr. Sherman shoots me a look. I shrug. Her request might hardly be something we can easily accommodate. I want a bird. A bird? I like to sing with them. Just like I used to back home. You mean out in the mountains? Okay, sure. You can have some record bird song. No! Again, we're forced to cover our ears against the piercing noise. I want a real bird. Real bird song. At that moment, the task force leader radio chirps, signaling an incoming transmission. He looks at it quizzically, then opens the receiver. The screaming from the other end almost makes him drop the device. Reinforcements! Send reinforcements! The voice is abruptly cut off. Well, we know where SCP-173 is. And they're jealous. The radio goes dead. Nobody says anything for a long moment. Eventually, I clear my throat. We'll get you a real bird. We'll get you a real bird. We can have it by tomorrow. Then you'll tell us what happened to SCP-173. Thank you. I take SCP-8008 off more aggressively than necessary. And the image of the girl on the screen is replaced by lifeless data. She wants birds. I nod. Getting SCP-8008 back to Dr. Sherman, who stores them safely in his press pocket. Dr. Singer and I have decided that's the safest place for them. This is a bad idea. I don't know how, but it is. Whatever choice do we have? 
the mental image of SCP-62 looms over us all. I step down the hallway, signaling to the other researchers to follow. I nod to the task force team leader as we go. The man is as solemn as granite. We could just wait for the task force personnel to do their jobs. It's as if a cloud is hanging over me, blurring my thoughts. Am I just tired? Or is there something more insidious? Yeah, let's go to all of them, sure. Normally it would take days to clear this kind of experiment with higher-ups. But if Dr. Field's gone, I'm the highest ranking researcher we've got. They're really not taking any chances this time. Behind me I hear Dr. Sherman fake a cough to hide his grin. On either side of us is a full legion of mobile task force guards watching us pass. Their black helmets and visors obscure their glares, but I can still feel the chill in the air. These men just, just lost friends because a researcher like me couldn't handle his assignment. I carefully step to avoid the electric rail sent into the floor as we approach SCP-682's new containment chamber. We stop just inside the huge space. Before us sits a massive 5M, 5M, by 5M, cube of reinforced steel filled with hydraulic acid. In the acid hangs SCP-682 itself, suspended between life and death as its body regenerates just as fast as the acid can eat it away. Dr. Sherman pulls out his notebook. As always, he'll be acting as my personal reality anchor. SCP-1682, can you understand me? I come to talk to you about SCP-173. A low chuckle resonates through the room. I can feel it in the soles of my feet. SCP-682 flicks its massive tail to slowly turn away from the view screen. Do you know what happened to it? No response. SCP-682 is now floated so its back is fully facing us. We don't have time for this. I don't have time for this. I have been hoping to avoid this. Were you? He watches me carefully as he hands me the novelty glasses. You're not immune to it. I know that too well. With a deep breath I put an SCP-8008. Okay. Are you... wearing shoes? She's so big. Nice. It takes me a moment to compose myself before I can speak. SCP-682. I need to know what happened during the breach. Ask nicely, Doctor. Her voice is not at all like I expected. Would you please tell me what happened? Before the sculpture comes to kill you. Do you think that too? Nice. What do I get in return for the information? I never seen such a hostile smile. And what makes you think? I won't get you first. In the corner of my eye, I see Dr. Shimon watching me carefully. They need to stay focused on SCP-682. You cannot be trusted. The acid swirls in little eddies around her as she, she laughs. You're a funny little human. What could you possibly want anyways? That I could give you at least. If you were to tell us where SCP-173 is. I hear the creaking of plastic as the task force personnel shift their weight around the room. Their guns are still lowered. For now. Doctor. Silence! Everyone in the room instinctively covers their ears. I want one hour in the sunlight. Do oh, that's... That's, uh... That's leading me to death. That is my offer. I really the offer to Dr. Sherman. I have the question. You may not have the luxury of time. Disgusting human. I was not finished with my demands. I want you to accompany me, Doctor. Me? You want me? Don't get any silly ideas, you baka. 
that your shipment scribbling has stopped. Waiting for my next words. I am not sure I have a better option. I accept. Oh yeah. Go on. We're gonna get all of them to like us. Because this is gonna go really well. I accept. No, maybe it will. Maybe they'll like, they'll duke it out. That'll give us time to live. Wonderful. I look forward to it. See you tomorrow. I remove SCP-8008 and hand to Dr. Shemin for safekeeping. SCP-682 rumbling laughter follows us out of the chamber. I cannot but wonder if I'm making the right decision. Nope. And time is running out. Once we're outside earshot of the guards, Dr. Shemin stops looking me dead in the eyes. You can't go through with this. It might be our best shot. Dr. Shemin runs his hands through hair. Alright, fine. I trust you. Prepare for tomorrow's... dates? Let's go all day. We're all exhausted. No one argues with that. We'll talk about this one in the morning, alright? Dr. Shemin looks at me then at Dr. Singer. He shrugs, looking just as exhausted as I feel. Okay, let's get back to that. Let's get you back to the medical ward. My eyes drift closed just as soon as I'm tucked in the bed. What a day. Everything swirls around in my mind as I sleep overtakes me. Now what? How about this? Here we go. Oh, where am I? You. Get out. So, like, you're the only one that's appearing here. I don't see the ever, like, SCPs. What is this? Oh wait, no, they're they're coming in. I see the see the, the text change. I said get out. He's my husband though. How do I leave? Oh Shut up, both of you. Meet. SSCP96. Don't look at those creepy eyes. I'm not creepy. Just checking in. Oh, that's just pathetic. I hate you both so much. Shut up. I'm not joking. I will kill you. Click on my face! Oops, I clicked in the face. Where am I? The tunnel's beneath the facility. I hear footsteps. And shouting. Is that- Oh god! I hit the ground. What happened? I've fallen out of bed. The towel floor is cold on my cheek. What was that nightmare? My wrist hurts. I ripped the IV out. And the heart rate monitor, considering the alarm, tell me I'm flatline. The door to my room flies open. Doctor! I look up to see my assistant still waiting in the doorway. In the next moment, he's at my side. Oh, thank God. I thought... I'm fine. Just a nightmare. He looks at me strangely, somewhere between concern and relief. Some nightmare. Come on, let me help you. I sit on the edge of the bed, rubbing my sore wrist. The morning shift nurse arrives a moment later to check my vinyls. Dr. Sherman hangs back, fidgeting with his favorite pen. Healthy as a horse? The nurse first has a smile for my benefit, but says nothing. Then Dr. Sherman and I are alone again. It was SCP-173. Dr. Sherman looks up at me. In my nightmare, that is. She's down in the tunnels. I think I even know where. No, you don't. It was just a dream. I'm not sure anymore. I sigh, weighing our options. We could give SCP-682 its hour of sunlight, and pray it doesn't kill us all in the process. Or give SCP-096 its bird, and pray it also doesn't kill us all in the process. 
All our options kind of suck. But the showman actually laughs at that. You're right about that. So what should we do? Maybe go in the tunnels? We prepare for the descent into the tunnels beneath the facility as quickly as possible. Dr. Singer, Sherman, and I are kitted with industrial spring flashlights and rations, just in case. We're also outfitted with head-mounted radios, which should work even deep underground. I feel like a D-boy! I agree, but Dr. Singer is stone-faced. The six task force personnel assigned to us don't seem to find any funnier. I really wish I had a way to track SCP-173, or the Nati's live bait. We need to stick together down there. Personnel have gone lost in these tunnels. Why exactly did we build this set on top of a cave system again? That's actually a fair question. Someone above our pay grade probably knows. Great. One more thing to worry about down there. Or is in the dark, check. He's filling with SCP-8008, which is tucked in his breast pocket. Are you gonna put him on next? Because you've been, like, putting him in your pocket. I'm, I'm not trusting that fully. We head down the last five stairs into the tunnels. Down here, the middle floors give way to rough stone. It's humid down here and cold. Every time I exhale, a little cloud of water vapor is illuminated by my flashlight. We travel for some time through the seemingly endless tunnels, always heading down. We pass through several task force waypoint camps, which have been set to coordinate the search. The men watch us with dull eyes. There are no injured among them, but what they're tracking doesn't leave injured. Down. All the way down. It must have been at least an hour. My shoulders are aching from the tension. We come to a passage with nearly a dozen offshoot tunnels. I have no idea which way we should go. Um, we all stop in our tranks suddenly on high alert. The task force personnel scan the darkness with their gun-mounted flashlights. The slim beams of light are insignificant in the oppressive blackness. What is it? Where's Sherman? He's dead! We all look at each other. Dr. Sherman isn't here. We need to backtrack. We have to... Nobody move! She says it so calmly that everyone freezes instantly. Her eyes are so wide as she looks among task force personnel. They, all, they look equally terrified. I thought we only had six task force members with us. In the space of an instant, the man sitting next to me is turned into a red slurry. It sprays the side of my face. Run! So you and I book it for a random exit. I'm not even sure where we're going. Down. We're still going. The singer goes down behind me. Something has her leg. I can't see. And then she's gone. For a long moment, everything is perfectly silent. Only my ragged breathing are echoing back to me. Then I hear a quiet scraping noise. I run as fast as I can. My lungs are burning. My legs are screaming. A sudden drop in the path sends me sprawling. Right for one of the dagger sharp stalagmites. My wrist! A wave of nausea rolls through me as I curl on the ground, protecting my arm. I can't. I look up. This is the cavern from my dream. And there at the far end is SCP-173. I almost don't even recognize it. And there in front of us, Dr. Sherman. Farron! He turns to look in. What? Where am I? This place seems familiar. Where's Dr. Sherman? Where's SCP-173? Where's... The final game. Get them points. Get that bread. Stop. Forget about the points. I need you. Nice. I've been watching you. Your friend is talking to me. Out there in reality. Are they betraying me? Whatever that even is. He's trying to convince me to spare you. Oh, no, they're not. They're doing the exact opposite. How sweet. Wow, you're a real bro. How stupid. But we're friends. So I'll give you a deal. It's to have a staring contest. If you move... I'll kill him. If you don't... 
I'll take you instead. Ready? Go. Don't move. Nice. I've accepted this. I can't move. You really do care about me, don't you? Yes. I have the... Yeah, I have the anime disease. It's true. I'm feeling suddenly really depressed about that now. What have I done? I've lost control of my life. I knew it all along. I can't... Suddenly I feel her lips against mine. I feel... I... Do we live? Oh, you have a voice. SCP-808 long date number 1st, 1999. SCP-173 has been recontained. Dr. Singer was never recovered from the tunnels. Dr. Shimmer was found wandering in the dark some time later. He seems to have no memory of what transpired as he being interrogated. The final research is to be considered MIA. SCP-808 log date number 22nd, 1999. The final research has been found. Alive. They're wearing SCP-8008. Nice! Good! However, they appear to be in some sort of catatonic state. That's okay! Any attempts to remove the novelty glasses result in immediate cardiac arrest. Testing must continue. If they do not recover within two weeks, a new research cohort will be brought in. The rest of the data has been expunged. Game over. Fine. Great job. Yeah, that's right. I just sent down to the cafeteria to get some water. I clock on the wall reads just past 2 a.m. It's so quiet. I found my way to the cafeteria about an incident. It's empty but for Dr. Singer, the third researcher in our cohort sitting on one of the benches. She's staring into a hot mug of coffee, hunched over her elbows resting on her knees. Dr. Singer? She jumps on voice, spilling coffee on her hands and dropping the mug of a shout. It showers on the ground. Sorry, I didn't mean to. No, no, it's fine, it was an accident. She means it, but I still feel bad. Never says anything as we clean up the mess. Eventually I break the silence. I had to go with SCP-96 today. Dr. Singer makes a face as she rinses her hands under the cold water. That bad, huh? No. She didn't even talk to me. It's just... She... Dr. Singer pauses from within blinks. It... Thank you. She turns off the faucet and dries her hands. You were assistant to the previous League researcher, right? I cannot but ask. She nods. All data about them was expunged. I was hoping you might be able to... I let my question trail off as I see the paleness of Dr. Singer's face. I don't want to talk about... Her eyes are cold. But it might be able to help us. It might... I said I don't want to talk about... Suddenly the room rocks to the sound of a distant explosion. An instant later the containment breach alarm blares to life. What the... Dr. Singer and I look at each other in horror as we both come to the same realization. Dr. Fields! All right, let's try moving. Ready? Go. The final two researchers were never recovered from the tunnels. Dr. Shimmer was found wandering in the dark some time later, wearing SCP-8008. He's physically unharmed, but redacted, redacted by the redacted. SCP-173 has been recontained. The next cohort of the researchers will be brought in shortly to continue work on SCP-8008. The rest of the data is expunged. So you still died. Mmm. Don't click on the face. No. You no know many times you put an arrow in front of it, I'm not clicking on the face. Nope. Nope. 
Ain't happening this time. Ain't happening. SCP-8038 log entry in October 30th, 1999. The researchers on SCP-173 suffered a massive brain aneurysm in their sleep. Oh, so you actually do kill us. It's no longer a bluff. It's unclear whether this is associated with SCP-8038 trials. The other researchers will be monitored for possible neurodeficiencies. The doctor will be relieved by his assistant, Dr. Sherman, and the experiments will continue. When once I get the 5,000 points? Will you break my leg? Now we're going to wait to see if you break our legs. I wake with a start. What was that dream? Something about legs? And... Oh god, you're gonna break my legs! What the hell? Thank you. For what? She's gone. Okay, my legs aren't broken. How much if I resist? There is the urge to terrified to even move. His screams become gurgles as he disappears in SCP-8682's mall. Gunfire erupts from behind SCP-682. I hit the four adjusted bullets swoop through the air around me, sending my sprays of sharp stone where they hit the tiles. I cover my head. Even above the sirens and the gunfire, I can hear SCP-682 shriek as enters a rage state. The floor rocks under me as another section of the building collapses. Then suddenly, the shower of debris and bullets stops. Even sound seems muted. I decide to risk it. Carefully open up one dust-covered eye to see a pair of bare, gray feet stain just inches from my face. After a moment of confusion dawns on me, SCP-096 had been moved into the adjoining cell block for testing. I cover my eyes an instant, praying I haven't seen its face somehow. To see SCP-096's face is stern deaf. You! Its girl voice rings for the high ceiling chamber. Followed by a howl from SCP-096 as the two enters a rage state upon being glimpsed. I finally begin to crawl away from the sounds of the fighting as the two anomalies clash. I hope desperately I'm going in the opposite direction. Something bumps in my hand, something light and plastic. I don't have to open my eyes to know it's SCP-8008. Again, my mind screams to put them on and see. Resist. I resist. I won't end up like Dr. Fields. I won't. A huge chunk of concrete stacks me in the back, crushing the air from my lungs in a whoosh. I can't breathe. Can't breathe! The vision goes soft around the edges as if life is slowly crushed out of me. Is this it? Something is pulling my legs. Something impossibly strong. I feel hands around my ankles. I gasp as the pressure on my chest is released and the light returns to the world. I don't have the glasses on though, I still see you. You okay? I've got you. I won't ever let the Everest have you. She's gone. And her voice is... Your legs were broken when that wall fell on you. Next one's the dull like I've been feeling in the fuzziness of my head. Must be some pretty powerful painkillers. I should write a thank you letter to the pharmaceuticals department. So my legs were technically broken. Not bad. They'll heal. But you'll be in a wheelchair in a cast for a few months at least. Damn it. We defined SCP-173. I think I might be in danger. Do nothing. No, you're right. We've been through enough today. Dr. Sherman visibly relaxes. I hope you see reason, sir. Do you want to play cards? It might help. I smile. Sure thing. Dr. Sherman and I stay up late in the night playing cards. Even after all the years, I still can't read his poker face. He's totally cleaned me out. He was right, though. It did take my mind off things. Uh, I'm not going to be able to get 50,000 points. That's doable. Too bad about your legs. Hey! I could have helped. I look like that detail, but no. Seriously, we need to get 25,000 and we die. That's not bluff, probably. Not anymore. Yeah, I'm doing alright. We good. Yeah, I know. You're just checking. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. 25,000 or I die. Sure, sure. Not choking. Yeah, yeah. Yep, I got it. Ho-ho! 
You've doubted me. I get to live, right? Go away. See you later. Where am I? Hey, you can't kill me. I got the points. The tunnel's beneath the facility. I hear footsteps and shouting. Is that... No, it's a nightmare. My eyes open in the dark. I'm cold, sticky with sweat. What was that nightmare? The machines are hooked up to our throwing a fit, setting off the alarm again. The door to my room flies open. Doctor! I look up to see my assistant silhouette in the doorway. The next moment, he's at my side. Oh, thank God. Now, skip ahead. I still think using the glasses in SCP-682 and SCP-96 is a bad idea. I agree with him there. There's only one thing to do. Oh, but they didn't tell us no matter what. In my wheelchair, I feel especially vulnerable. I wouldn't be able to run away even if things get dicey. We need to stick together down there. There's enough gone lost in these tunnels. It's difficult to push my chair over uneven ground, but I manage. There's someone needs both three hands to navigate. And I keep an eye out for anything. She drops her flashlight to grab the handles of my wheelchair and has moving before I can even understand what's happening. An even ground jostles my legs. I'd be howling in pain if it weren't so... The thing goes down behind me. I do like, like I said, I really like the detail. Like, there is a broken leg grout. But Dr. Singer still died. I push myself as fast as I can. My hands are burning from gripping the rubber wheels. A sudden drop in the path sends me sprawling. It would nausea rolls from me as I curl on the ground. I think one of my legs has rebroken. I can't... Eh, it's a little bit of a bug. They get kind of stuck to the front here. Sadly. Place familiar? Where's Dr. Sherman? Where's SCP-173? Where's... Now I'm gonna really get those points. No. I'm gonna get the points. 50,000. Okay, don't move. Do we survive if we don't move? I can't move. I see. All this time you've been resisting me. I understand. You don't want to be together. I feel the lips brush mine just briefly. And then she's gone. Dr. Singh was never recovered from the tunnels. The final researcher and assistant were considered redacted. Till both were found collapsed in the lower side corridors. SCP-808 was not in their possession. SCP-173 has been recontained. The rest of the data has been expunged. You survived! Yay. Yeah, I got the points. Yeah. Because that was too easy. Ooh, 45,000. Fan service route?
I'm just gonna visit both of us today. I'm not gonna get the treat. It is actually possible to get 45,000. I've done it on like the, the earlier game, it's just tricky. So I went back and I actually beat this mini game, or rather, I, I got the amount of points to get the treat. Here's the kind of secretish scene what happens when you manage enough points here, naturally. What happened? I fall now of bed. The towel floor is cold on my cheek. It's a little plate on the ground. Right in front of my face. Peanut brittle. I'm allergic to peanuts. So my eyes drift close, I can't think of SCP-682. So this is a route where I only went to them. Because I might be deterministic for uh, actually surviving the route. She's cruel and her reputation speaks for itself. But I can't but wonder what lies underneath. Ooh, a different theme. Blizzard theme. I kind of like it. It's got a nice jazz to it. Go on a date with SCP-682. Lift the puzzles on the roof of the facility. SCP-682 containment cube is already waiting for us. The wind is surprisingly cold up here. How long has it been ever been since I've gone outside? Summer has slipped away without me even noticing. And now the sun is setting too. I sit in the chair provided next to SCP-682 containment cube. The Dresden looks even colder than I feel. His teeth are chattering. It's taken most of the day to bring SCP-682 up to the roof to catch the dying rays of the sun. Inside, I can see her paling in her acid bath, eyeing me for the eye small viewport. She almost seems excited. I gesture to the lead task force personnel to begin. The woven tarp electrified wire draped over the containment cube hums to life. Enough electricity to power a small town sizzles through the exposed wires. Enough to vaporize anything that comes in contact with it. Hopefully enough to slow SCP-682 down. The sealed top of SCP-62's prison has opened slowly. I can't deny a part of me is excited to see her again. She surfaces, lifting her snout to catch the last of the sun's rays. But not far enough that she contact a deadly wire net. Around us, the task force personnel shift, checking the safeties on their weapons. Off. They're making sure their safeties are off. The Sherman hands me SCP-8008 without prompting. He clearly wants to get this over with as quickly as possible. Just as I do. Beginning the experiment. But hesitation upon SCP-8008. Nice. God, you're huge. Jeez. I stopped the fun in its tracks. I'm stronger than this. I need to resist. Ah. Ready to talk? Am I allowed now, peace? You made me a promise. Tell us what you know. Do you know how I came to be here? No. No one knows SCP-682's true origin. Might I be the first to learn? Come. 
Run your fingers through my hair. We shall chat. Should I really trust her? Pat her hair. I slowly walk towards her. Towards the edge of the roof. The shimmer falls behind me as if dragged by a tether. I'm able to see over the edge clearly now. It's a very long way down. Well? You really are stupid. Even for a human. I pre- But the attack doesn't come. She seems peaceful. I run my fingers through her thick green hair. Nice! This is real. This is real nice. It's coarse. More like fur than hair. But not unpleasant. The cold wind catches my lab coat, making it flap around my knees. The red sun illuminates the curve of her silhouette. Do you really want to know? About me. I'm surprised by how uncertain she sounds. Sure, I mean, if you're comfortable. That was a smile. The silence stretches between us. I am very old. She speaks so quietly, I have to strain to hear. Everything decays. But me. I don't know what to say. Do I try to console her? Something in her posture warns me not to. I am the wrath that stalks mankind. I am death everlasting. But... I am lonely. You're lying. This is a hallucination. You're not real. Aren't I? I'm not sure anymore. I will tell you where the sculpture is. If you want. Or you can forget about her. And I will protect you. Your choice. I'm not sure what to make of her offer. It does sound nice. Protect me forever! Alright. I take a cautious step forward. I accept. Really? You'll stay. Yeah, I mean... The Store of Worlds Mini Godzilla... Thing? Girlfriend? That's... that's fine. Maybe anyway, that's a bonus. I nod, stepping forward again. Talk to please. I slap him away. Slap. I don't even look to see the expression on his face, but he doesn't reach out again. I'll stay. God. I'm lifted off my feet by a sudden explosion of light. The edge of the roof comes and goes in a sickening lurch. And then I'm falling. Falling. Fall. Dang. We're supposed to kiss, not die. Resist the temptation. I can't. It's not like you're thinking. SCP-173 is going to kill me if I don't find her. I just want to put her back in her box. You promised you'd help with that. So I did. These images. In my mind. I cover my eyes. The light of the setting sun is suddenly blinding. As if I spent hours in complete darkness. I know where she is. SCP-173. I jump almost having forgotten he was there. Yes, I can find her now. Thank you, SCP-682. The wind gusts as the last of the sun retreats below the horizon. Her expression darkens with the sky. Time is up. I look at her strangely. Her hour has only just begun. A sudden concussion in the air strikes me in the back. I fly forward and... Dr. Sherman! I open my eyes to find Dr. Sherman hauled over me. The smell of acid burned flesh hits me immediately. Ferran! Dr. Sherman doesn't respond over than to carefully pick up SCP-8008 from where it's fallen nearby. And took the anomaly into his press pocket. You're hurt! He shakes his head. I I'm fine. His breathing is shallow. D did you get what we needed from it? Yes. I did. Dr. Sherman sags with relief. His face contorts with pain. We need to get you to the medical. 
A distant explosion marks SCP-682 path of destruction as it escapes into the facility. Dr. Sherman shakes his head. No. Not safe. We have to finish this. He's right. There's only one path left to take. Into the tunnels. Out of nowhere, a pair of massive jaws closes where Dr. Singh had been a moment earlier. Crash. Two task force personnel are crushed in the next instant, as SCP-682 drops from the ceiling. The rest open fire. Man, you're like a lizard Kool-Aid, man. Pathetic. She swings her tail around, cracking me hard in the back. I go down. Then I'm running. I picked a tunnel at random. Anything is better than staying where I am. I'm not even sure where we're going. Down. We're still going. Run as fast as I can. My lungs are burning. My legs are screaming. A sudden drop in the path sends me sprawling. Skip ahead. What? Where am I? This place seems familiar. Where's Dr. Sherman? Where's SCP-173? Where's... Hey. I thought I told you to. Nice! Man, I've been saying that a lot. I've been looking for you. You come to help me? Do you think you could escape? Oh, it, it is a kaiju battle. How'd you find us? <laughs> How stupid are you? You have to trail in their dreams. What's this other human doing? That's our friend. He's trying to convince me not to kill them. Ah, yes. He was there on the roof. Don't look at him like that. Your jealousy. Like what? But ruling. Sapla. Oh no. I think I've been getting points this entire time. How can I get points? I can't even really move the things. I'm not clicking your face. This is a specific route. I can't move. Finally, we're alone. I sense you have feelings for the sculpture. I would be lying if... I said I wasn't disappointed. <laughs> I have something for you. Are we... Are we kissing? Is, is this happening? Her lips crush against mine. Ah. I taste blood. I. SP log date number 1st, 1999. The final two researchers would never recover from the tunnels. The Shimmer was found wandering in the dark sometime later, wearing SCP 8008. He's physically unharmed, but redacted, redacted by the redacted. SCP 173 and SCP 62 have been recontained. The next cohort of researchers will be brought in shortly to continue work on SCP 8008. The rest of the data is expunged. Game over. I can't move. You. I don't know what to make of you. You should be terrified of me. And I should despise you. But. Hold very still, human. Your lips brush against mine. Huh. I taste blood. And then she's gone. And this is the ending where we survive. SCP. Lizard. Dr. Singer was never recovered from the tunnels. The final researcher and the system were considered redacted, though both were found to collapse in the lower side corridors. SCP-8038 was not under possession. SCP-173 and SCP-62 have been recontained. The rest of the data has been expunged. You survived.
No, I actually got the points. I can't move. Was she telling the truth? Did you also spend time with 096? I forget to mention it. Don't bother. I can see in your eyes. Well, since I'm out, I might as well have some fun. <laughs> SP-008, log date number first. The faulty researchers were never recovered from the tunnels. The shimmer was found wandering in the dark sometime later. Ring SCP-8008. He's physically unharmed, but redacted by redacted by redacted. SCP-173 and SCP-682 have been recontained. Next cohort of researchers will be brought in shortly to continue work on SCP-8008. The day is expunged. Game over. My eyes are closed, I can't but think of SCP-096. She seems so timid and kind. Perhaps the Foundation has misjudged her. Now, let's see how this goes down. Because we know that the other uh, SCPs do alter the... Ah! It's peaceful and stuff. Whoops. We just shift these around. Again. I've been like West Points this time. I think about SCP-96 offer from yesterday. Just a little bird. What could it hurt? Every one would be way more personnel killed down in the tunnels. How many will die if SCP-96 escapes? The thing is time bomb as is. Just one pixel on the news broadcast and that's it. No more humanity. The thought makes my blood run cold. What should we do? Come on, deal with SCP-96. The songbird trills in the cage tucked on my arm. Let's be unaware of all danger, and like the small army of task force personnel gathered around us. There's no pretense of hesitation today as Dr. Sherman handed me SCP-8008, as I always marvel at how light the novelty glasses are. Dr. Senior seems withdrawn, her arms crossed tightly. Begin the experiment. Dr. Singer punches in the code without comment. The door grinds open, rusty with age. Visual contact established. SCP-96 is sitting hunched in the corner of its cell. Its grotesque elongated arms wrapped around its bony knees. Three layers of blackout Teflon cops and bags have been secured over its head. The operation was performed by autonomous robots that avoid the possibility of a human glimpsing its face. I step forward into the threshold. A sudden hand on my shoulder makes me pause. Be careful in there. I nod. Dr. Sherman leaves me alone in the containment chamber. The door squeals closed behind me. There's no going back now. Checking onto your feed. A slight cracking proceeds after seeing his voice over the speakers. Loud and clear, Doctor. No going back. But hesitation upon an SP-8008. Okay, we actually get to see you. Jeez. I stopped that fun in its tracks. I'm stronger than this. I need to resist. You came back. Of course. And you brought my bird. 
Ah. Before I can stop her, she's taken the cage from me. The bird inside doesn't see the mine. Distantly, I wonder what I would see if I removed the glasses. Would I see SCP-096 standing in front of me? Spelling of its hitherly descended mouth. I remind myself that this is a hallucination. The real SCP-096 has three layers of blackout bags over its head. Such a pretty bird. Chirp, chirp, chirp. Chirp. The bird sings back to my amazement. La 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 la. Chirp, chirp. Sing with us, Doctor. Sing with her. Uh, I clear my throat. La la la? No! You have to really mean it. Subconsciously, I try again. La la la. The notes are off, but it's closer. Chirp, chirp, chirp. She takes my hand in hers. Ooh. We're moving forward in this relationship. Her fingers are warm and delicate. Not all like I would have expected. There you go. You're getting it. One more time with me. Chirp, chirp. La la. Wow. It actually worked. Her smile of joy is infectious. To the outside observer, it probably sounds like I've completely lost my mind. But I can't bring myself to care. Ah. This brings back such wonderful memories. Of your life in the mountains? I used to sing all the time. What was it like? What was it like? To be free like that, I mean. My life has become so rigid. But late time for pleasure. I can't even remember what freedom feels like. SP-96 beams at the question. I have no words to explain. But perhaps... We're gonna die. We're getting punctuation to death. Does that make sense? My heart is racing my chest. Now I'm the one who's speechless. I... I understand. Your expression darkens. That was a long time ago, though. Then the man came and took me here. She drops the cage of the bird inside. It's unharmed, but it's startled into a frenzy. SV-96 starts shaking all over. I can't breathe. There's something over my head. Please. Help me take it off. My heart breaks for the poor girl before me. Trapped here against her will. Taken from the open mountains to be kept forever in a concrete box. She bends forward, guiding my hands to the base of her neck. Mmm, intimate. I don't see anything, but I can clearly feel the ties binding the Teflon bags over her head. Should I help her? Remove the bags. Alright, I'll take them off. Carefully, I untie the invisible cords. Distantly, I hear shouting. It's static filled and so far away. My assistant. Dr. Singer. I feel the unseen fabric loosen. I lift it up over her hair and... Oh! She's so... Beautiful. Game over. Okay, let's not remove the bags. I shouldn't. I'm sorry, but I can't. She seems dejected. It's except her, isn't it? The sculpture. You're only here because you want to find her. That's not true. I really enjoyed our time together today. Really? Really. I'd love to sing together again sometime. I just need to find SCP-173 to stop her killing our personnel. Then I promise I'll come visit again. She looks uncertain, but hopeful. Well, in that case, these images, there we go, they beams in our mind. I cover my ears, gasping. The quietness of SCP-96 cell is suddenly deafening, as if I spent an eternity in the perfect quiet. I, I know where she is. Thank you. Remember your promise. I will. She sighs. I wish. That I could trust you. Hey! My vision explodes in a field of bright stars. 
I... Slim being helped off off the ground. Did I pass out? The sound of wrenching metal fills the room. Don't look, whatever you do, don't! Will the task force personnel screams? Where? Doctor, are you alright? I see him tucking SCP-8 through his weight into his breast pocket. The ground I find myself on the floor several meters from where I'd been. Oh god. Please tell me you got what we need. I glance up at him. The Sherman's hair is disheveled and his eyes are terrified. Do you still focus on the mission? Yes. I did. I know where we need to go. Into the tunnels. Nobody move. She says so calmly that everyone freezes instantly. Her eyes are so white as she looks among task force personnel. They look equally terrified. One well, task force personnel starts firing madly into the blackness. If it's joined, I'm not even sure what they're firing at. Crack. A gray blur hits the first task force officer so hard as he's neck snapped from whiplash. Don't look! She's cut short. Literally. The creature takes her out of the knees, severing them. Mystery bullet hits my shoulder. Dr. Singh is rolling on the ground. Confused and terrified. I need to go. I should help her. I need... Then I see two long legs move to stand over her. I've watched her eyes travel off the length of them. And the rest of the face hid in the dark. I run. I pick the tunnel I pointed out earlier. Down. We're still going. What? Where am I? This place seems familiar. Where's Dr. Sherman? Where's SCP-173? Where's... Okay. This will be the SCP-96 version of this. Oh, it's scary. Oh no. Am I interrupting? So glad I found you. Going on points. I got the chance. Don't look, no. Man, that's, that's a tall order. Maybe if you weren't moving things around, I'd be able to, like, do this. Just because, like, difficulty of moving them when they're like this, it's like... I can't move. Oh. I might have gotten a little intense back there. Sorry. It might be because... I like you, okay? What are you, an anime girl? Technically, yes. I said it. But... I know you care for her. The sculpture. I won't let her have you. I won't! The faulty researchers were never recovered from the tunnels. Dr. Shipman was found wandering in the dark sometime later. Wearing SCP-8008. He's physically unharmed, but redacted, redacted by the redacted. SCP-173 and SCP-96 have been reduced contained. Next cohort of researchers will be brought in shortly to continue work on SCP-8008. Rest of data is expunged. Game over. I'm not a very good singer. I'm not a very good singer. That's fine. Never am I, really. What? You're amazing. You really think so? Absolutely. You all just sit and listen. Okay. 
She seems nervous but excited. So I think that's the correct choice there, actually. Her song ends on a sad note. My heart is racing my chest. I... That was... I'm speechless. Can't move. Oh! I got a little tense back there. Sorry. Might be because... I like you, okay? I said it. What's that? You... You like me too? Well, in that case... Nice. I feel her lips against mine. Cold, but not unpleasant. I'll see you around. She disappeared. Her lips taste like blood. SCP log, date... Dr. Singh was never recovered from the tunnels. The final research and the system were considered redacted. The both were found collapsed in the lower side corridors. SCP-8008 was not in the possession. SCP-173 and SCP-96 have been recontained. The rest of the data has been expunged. You survived. Play again. I can't move. It's true. What she said, isn't it? That you were spending time with that lizard. And didn't tell me. I thought I could trust you. I was wrong. It's to be 8 long date. The only researchers were never recovered from the tunnels. Tradition was found wandering in the dark sometime later. Ring SCP-8008. He's physically unharmed, but redacted, redacted by the redacted. SCP-173 and SCP-096 have been recontained. Next cohort of research will be brought in shortly. Continue work on SCP-8008. Unless the data is expunged. So that's it for Doki Doki Anomaly, the full version. I like the original, and I like this one too. Um, as a focus kind of story, especially around SCP-173, we've lost a little bit of that because it's, you know, kind of a sequel. We've introduced two new SCPs, so we have to kind of balance it out with them and kind of get their relationships going. Because of the balancing act, we get less focus overall once again because the the first game was it's like about four days you spent with uh scp-173 this one we get to spend maybe about a couple days with the other scps and scp-173 is kind of wandering around as a uh kind of an overall threat but as a structured game it's better it is an improvement over the first one especially with the mechanics of the puzzle and how it unlocks endings but overall i don't really kind of think of it as like what is outright better than the other game it's more like they're, they're good companion pieces. Because like I said, this is a sequel, very literally. I mean, the story takes place right after the last one. And as a whole, it's unique. Maybe it's an SCP dating sim. It's done with a little bit of a unique charm, a little bit of a unique style. And it still maintains a bit of the horror of what these SCPs are. It's not just, they're all cute and they all love you. There's definitely a major threat. But unlike the first game, we actually have a chance to live, get the kisses and walk out. So it's not just a complete death trap, which is, I suppose, the uh, that makes this trip worth the uh, price of admission alone. Anyway, so thank you all for watching me play Doki Doki Anomaly. I'll see you guys later, and take it easy.